Gonna go to the How can it be that good? That's so bloody clever! The Acura FP2 presence sensor has been given high praise by all my favorite YouTubers. Stu from Stu's Reviews, Brian from Automate Your Life, Reed from Smart Home Solver, Shane Watley, Craig from Craig's Tech Talk, but I think Stu's demonstration is by far the most exciting. But it doesn't simply detect movement in multiple locations, it detects presence of up to five separate people in up to 30 separate zones, meaning that you could sit down at your desk and have the lights come on, and then your missus sit at her desk and then her lights come on, all from one sensor. <laughs> It just works! But it does so much more than that, and I think everyone so far has missed the bigger picture. This is a really exciting development in smart homes in a quite unexpected way, and I'll talk more about that in this video. Having checked this thing out for myself, I am utterly blown away. What's it? I've got a cold sore. Oh hi everybody! I'm Herpes Simplex! What's that? I have her PC Plex too! Oh hi everybody! Thanks to Akara for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their Akara FP2. The FP2 isn't a motion sensor, it's a radar. And no, I'm not joking. If I was joking, I'd say something like, Jeff Bezos has finally got enough yachts. I never have enough yachts. It works with Amazon Alexa and Apple HomeKit, and at some point in the near future, it will fully work with Google Home too. And it does so via Wi-Fi and entirely locally without any need for cloud connectivity or a separately purchased Akara bridge. This means that even if your internet goes down, it will still work and there's no hub required because it's Wi-Fi instead of Zigbee. And this is where the exciting trend part comes in. This device could not be more open. This is the least greedy move I have seen from any company in any industry ever. This thing stores every piece of information that you set up in the app directly to the device. Not in the cloud, where Akara have access to it and nobody else, and it's up to them what happens with your data, and it's up to them what you can do with that information. This thing stores it and advertises it to other devices, such as Amazon Alexa, Apple HomeKit, and most excitedly for me, Home Assistant. From there, it's entirely up to you if you use the Akara ecosystem to do all of your automation, or if you choose to use Apple HomeKit's automations in their app, or even use Home Assistant. Whether you decide to use Amazon Alexa or Apple HomeKit or Home Assistant, this thing not only advertises the individual zones as different triggers for your automations, it also advertises the light sensor. This kind of functionality is never normally advertised to third parties. This is an incredibly selfless move on a car's part, and I am blown away. I'm gonna make that explorer again. So fucking as it is. Didn't expect that, did you? Probably didn't expect this either. If this video is proving to be useful or amusing to you, please do me a huge favor and just hit that subscribe button and ding the bell and also give it a like. Without those sorts of things, this channel doesn't continue. YouTube's algorithm is evil. That said, on with the show. Creating the individual zones in the Akara app is reasonably straightforward. It's just a case of mapping out your room. You can even stick in like chairs and sofas and stuff to give you a mental picture of what you're looking at. And then you just mark out the zones and those zones become triggers for your smart home equipment, either through the Akara app if you want to just use Akara's products, or through Amazon Alexa if you want to use your third party stuff that's connected to Alexa, or in fact, Home Assistant, HomeKit, etc. I've seen some reports from other users saying that it sometimes sees ghosts and then triggers an event. Stu from Stu's Reviews has seen it see a ghost, but it didn't trigger an event. It seems to be fairly infallible, and Stu proved it in his fantastic demonstration. Check this out. Yes, you 
you two please? No, no, it's not Paul Hibbert this week. It's Stuart of Stuart's Reviews. Yes, an inflatable sex doll. Disgusting. I don't personally have a pet, so I had to do some Googling around pet detection. Alrighty then kind of pet detection. Um, and I found that apparently cats and small dogs are fine, but anything that's kind of like a 50 pound animal plus is probably going to trigger your routines and enjoy them just as much as you do. These AI images are great until you realize the dog's got three legs. The sensors are not battery powered either, they are mains powered. And for me personally, this is a good thing. I get really sick of changing batteries. I'm not made of batteries. Kill me. I'M NOT SUPPOSED TO EXIST! These, I've, I've got to stop making these AI images, that's terrifying. The FP2 consumes between 1 and 2 watts, which if you work it out, is about 5 pound of electricity per year. I know, America, a pound is a measurement of weight. A pound is a measurement of weight, not a currency, you idiot, print, dumb idiot, print, idiot! But if you have a room such as this, you'll find that the electricity is buzzing all of the time, and if you have a device that turns this room off when you leave, the saving will be exponential. I also personally have Tedo radiator thermostats on every radiator in this house, and I could have them turn the heating off every single time the room is empty for more than, say, half an hour, because both devices are connected to Home Assistant. It's awesome. Do that. I'm going to. <laughs> Aside from the obvious turning on and off of lights as you enter and leave a room, you could also have it for elderly relatives who have lost the dexterity in their hands and struggle to use remote controls or toggle light switches, or, you know, people like me who are just terribly lazy. Walking into this room now turns the lights on, but thanks to its built-in light sensor, it does so only if it's dark, which in itself is genius. But moving to the sofa area turns the main light off and turns the lamp by the sofa on instead, whilst the projector screen rolls down and the projector turns on. And if I move to the Xbox area, as if I'm going to pick up the control pads, it recognises that I'm in that zone and switches the Xbox on using my Broadlink RM4 Pro. What? Home Assistant will discover the individual zones advertised through the Akara FP2 using the Apple HomeKit integration, even if you don't have Apple HomeKit, which is awesome. A word of warning though, if you do actually use Apple HomeKit and then go to use Home Assistant, Home Assistant won't find it. I'm not sure why that is. Perhaps Tim Cook, Apple CEO, can explain. It's because we're very, very greedy. Isn't that right, Lord Vader? Oh, I very greedy. Yes, it is. Corporate greed. The range on this sensor is mad. I don't have a big enough house to actually demonstrate this, but Reed from Smart Home Solver, which is another channel that you should absolutely subscribe to, has demonstrated it using his kitchen, diner, family area, which is using three individual zones to trigger three individual things. He has a range of 26 feet, and it works perfectly. The Akara app also lets you set up three individual modes. You can either have it just detect motion, or you can have it detect individual zones, or you can have it detect if somebody has fallen down. And this is fantastic if you've got elderly relatives, because I think we all have someone in our lives that we worry about falling down. Primarily me. Mostly worry about me. This is perfect if you're worried about privacy for your elderly relative because you don't need a camera to know if they have fallen over. The only thing is that because it's not battery powered and it has to be ceiling mounted for this particular function to work, you will need to actually get wiring to the device. 
There is the possibility, I guess, that you could connect it to some kind of portable power supply, but I haven't tested that functionality myself yet. It doesn't yet work with Matter, which means there is no Samsung SmartThing support, but that is a possibility down the line with a firmware update or a software update or whatever. Um, the Google Home stuff doesn't work properly at all right now as of time of filming. If that changes, I shall let you know in the description, but as of right now, it can't detect individual zones and then trigger a routine, so Google is entirely pointless. Um, in the meantime, I think probably the right answer is to just pop all of your Google stuff in a bin. Just, just put it in a bin. The new total load of rubbish from Google, because you might as well just be talking to a trash can. Now you are. I've not yet found a routine in Google that was actually of any use to me because none of it works properly. Just stick it in a bin. Stick it in a bin. If you have a ginormous house, there is a possibility of dead spots. Reed from Smart Home Solver has found that if he goes to his fridge, it can't see him there. He's counteracted this simply by making the routine only switch the lights off in the living room if he's been gone for more than a minute or two minutes. This means that he can go to the fridge, get his sandwich, come back, and the lights are all still on. Dead spots are a thing, potentially, if you have a ginormous house. And finally, if you use this as a full sensor for an elderly relative, Unfortunately, it then can't detect zones, which I think is a hugely missed opportunity, and I don't know why this is. I'm assuming it's a hardware limitation or a software limitation, but basically it's one or the other. You can't do both. At 82 quid on Amazon, this is not a cheap sensor, but there is nothing to compete with this level of accuracy. And I think it's worth every penny because this is 30 present sensors in one housing. A car have plans to take this even further. They plan to make it so that multiple sensors all around your house will be paired together to make one single map. I can imagine having these things absolutely everywhere, and I fully intend to do so. These things sell out faster than Akara can possibly stock them. If you find that the link in my description has stock, then I would buy them immediately. Hit the link in my description if they're stocked, buy them, otherwise you might not see another one for a while. This video was brought to you by these incredible people. They are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, there would be no video. If you want to be one of these incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, my Twitters, and my Instagrams, and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there, and we can be best friends. See you next time. And yes, I have a cold sore too. It's going around. I've not been kissing Paul Hibbert. <laughs> All my lights have got off. Mother <laughs>